subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 30th of December. Six terrorists neutralized in two separate encounters in India's Jammu and Kashmir. US appoints Reena Amiri as special envoy to defend Afghan women's rights. and Pakistan's cabinet approves mini budget amid rising inflation and now for all the details six terrorists including two pakistani nationals were killed in two separate encounters with the security forces in anantnag and kulgam districts of india's jammu and kashmir officials said on thursday The back-to-back -back encounters broke out on Wednesday as security forces launched anti-terror operations in Anantnag and Kulgam districts. At least 6 terrorists including two Pakistani terrorists were neutralized by security forces in two separate gun battles in India's union territory of Jammu and Kashmir, police said on Thursday. The back-to-back -back encounters began on Wednesday evening. as security forces launched anti-terror operations in Anantnag and Kulgam districts of Jammu and Kashmir while three terrorists were neutralized in Anantnag three were gunned down in Kulgam one Pakistani terrorist was killed in each of the encounters two M4 rifles and four AK47 rifles were also recovered from the encounter sites a senior police official said do pakistani militant mare gaye hain aur char local terrorist mare gaye jis mohot ke total chhe terrorist mare gaye hain और दो एम फोर एफल और चार एक के फोर्टी मिला है पुलिस इन्फॉर्म इन दिसंबर अलोन ट्वेंटी फोर टेररिस्ट इंक्लूडिंग फाइव पाकिस्तानी नेशनल्स हैव बीन न्यूट्रलाइज इंडिया हैज लॉन्ग एक्यूज पाकिस्तान ऑफ एडिंग टेररिस्ट थ्रू माउंट अटैक्स ऑन इंडियन सॉइल पाकिस्तान हाउ एवर डिनाइज द चार्ज India on Thursday reported 961 cases of the new Omicron variant as it logged 13,154 new COVID-19 infections in the last 24 hours, the highest jump since October. This comes as authorities across the country have started to impose stringent rules to prevent mass gatherings at parties and public venues ahead of the New Year celebrations to curb the virus spread. India on Thursday reported 13,154 new COVID-19 cases and 268 deaths in the last 24 hours, the highest number of daily infections since October, with urban centers reporting a big jump. Meanwhile, the cases of infection by the new Omicron variant rose to 961 across the country. This comes as authorities have started to impose stringent rules to prevent mass gatherings at parties and public venues ahead of the New Year celebrations to curb virus spread. Night curfews have been imposed in all major cities and restaurants ordered to limit customers. However, state authorities are finding it difficult to limit crowding in markets and holiday destinations as they are allowed to remain open. In view of the sharp rise in cases held ministry officials appealed for a heightened vigil jisme mukhyat hai containment activities ko bahut ek sudrad tarike se field par kiya jaye jaise ki restrictions in terms of night curfew ho large gatherings ki regulation ho us par karya kiya jaye sath hi testing and surveillance ek bahut important tool hai infection control ko management karne ke liye to testing jo hai wah guidelines ke prakar se ho Asia's third largest economy has already said it will allow COVID-19 booster shots for some of its population from January onwards. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken has named Reena Amiri, a former US government adviser, as a special envoy for Afghan women, girls and human rights. This comes as US President Joe Biden's administration has come under fire from women's rights groups for failing to ensure safe passage for activists and others that had long been targeted by the Taliban.
U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken on Wednesday named Reena Amiri, a former U.S. government advisor, who criticized the chaotic withdrawal from Afghanistan as a special envoy for Afghan women, girls and human rights. Amiri has spent two decades advising governments, the United Nations and think tanks on Afghanistan-related issues. Under former President Barack Obama, she served as a senior advisor to the U.S. Special Representative for Afghanistan and Pakistan. The Taliban overran Afghanistan in August as the former western backed government collapsed and the last U.S. troops withdrew after 20 years of war. Since then, the Taliban have curved the rights of women and girls, banning most of them from working and attending schools in what U.S. officials decry as backtracking by Islamist extremists from assurances they would observe human rights. The Taliban earlier this week also decreed that women traveling more than 45 miles should be accompanied by a close male family member. The United States and other governments have accused the Taliban of failing to establish an inclusive government and they have expressed concerns over reports of summary executions and the disappearances of former Afghan security force members. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's federal cabinet has approved the Finance Supplementary Bill 2021, paving way for it to be presented in the National Assembly, Information Minister Fawad Chaudhry informed on Thursday. After the passage of the bill, which the opposition terms as mini-budget, several items are likely to get expensive as Prime Minister Imran Khan's government plans to roll back tax exemptions worth Rs 350 billion. Pakistan has been already grappling with a record high inflation that is particularly hitting the country's poor and middle classes. The bill is part of the prior action targets set by the International Monetary Fund for the resumption of a $6 billion funding program. The joint opposition had earlier vowed to vehemently resist the bill. Opposition leader Shehbaz Sharif in a statement said that if the mini-budget is approved, then the new year will be the worst year of inflation for Pakistan. More on news from Pakistan. Locals in Pakistan's Karachi city have lamented that several hours of gas load shedding has made their lives miserable amid the winter season. They blame the government of being apathetic towards their plight and said, despite the gas crisis, authorities hand them over hefty bills that have become a nightmare for many. Frequent gas load shedding and despite that, hefty bills for gas have become a part of life for residents of Pakistan's financial capital Karachi amid the ongoing winter season. Residents accuse the gas crisis has made it difficult for them to cook, bathe and carry out other household chores and they are forced to rely on overpriced food from restaurants. They claimed they are fed up and tired of failed policies of the government which has raised prices of gas and other commodities on the terms dictated by the International Monetary Fund or IMF. क्या जुल्म नहीं है क्या ये आईएमएफ ने लागू नहीं किया आईएमएफ आईएमएफ ने लागू किया ना कि आपका अगर मीटर बंद है तो भी आपको 300 रुपए चार्जेस देने ही देने मीनवाइल प्राइम मिनिस्टर इमरान खान ऑन वेंसडे चेयर्ड अ हाई लेवल मीटिंग टू रिव्यू द गैस सिचुएशन इन पाकिस्तान द पीएम डायरेक्टेड ऑफिशियल्स टू फास्ट ट्रैक लाइसेंसेस फॉर डोमेस्टिक एक्सप्लोरेशन एंड रिमूव हर्डल्स इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ इंस्टॉलेशन ऑफ न्यू एलएनजी टर्मिनल्स एंड वर्चुअल पाइपलाइन प्रोजेक्ट्स बाय इन्वेस्टर्स People are thronging to hill stations in Nepal in large numbers as the westerly low-pressure system has brought rain and snowfall in parts of the Himalayan nation. Meanwhile, in neighboring India, residents across the northern region were also seen reeling under severe cold wave conditions. The impact of the westerly low-pressure system has brought rain and snowfall in parts of Nepal, including hill stations around Kathmandu where people are thronging to enjoy and play in the snow. Chandragiri Hills, a popular tourist spot just at the entrance of Kathmandu Valley, got covered with a thick layer of snow with people climbing onto the hill to play with the flakes. The news of snowfall has brought thousands of people to the hilltop, which is now connected by an electric cable car and other recreation facilities. यो हाम्रो यो मिडिया भनेको मिडिया यो टिकटक यो हरेक यो बाटा पनि हामीले थाहा पाउन दिएछ अहिले त अलिकति हामीले आज बिहान हामीले यो फेसबुक गरेर खोल्ला हामी ठाउँ चन्द्रगिरी हिउँ पर्यो भन्ने बितिक हामी फ्यामिली चार जना काटीले दौडिहाले आउँदा खेरि स्टोफलो एकदम रमाइलो भयो 
Meanwhile, in neighboring India, residents across the northern region, including capital New Delhi, were also seen reeling under severe cold wave conditions. To beat the cold wave, people huddled around bonfires and sipped hot cups of tea. The Indian Meteorological Department has forecast cold wave conditions over northwest India during the next four to five days. South Asia's winters are not as cold as other regions such as North America, but the millions of poor here are hit harder because they live in the open and do not have enough warm clothes. Spreading a message of gender equality, a transgender in India's southern Tamil Nadu state is training bulls for the upcoming Jallikattu festival or traditional bull taming sport. Jallikattu is practiced in southern India as part of celebrations of harvest festival Pongal, which falls in January every year. Spreading a message of gender equality, a transgender named Kirtan from Madurai in India's southern Tamil Nadu state is training bulls for the upcoming Jallikattu festival or traditional bull taming sport. Jallikattu signifies the celebration of nature and thanksgiving for a bountiful harvest. Kirtan is training six bulls for the festival this time. One of her bulls had earlier won the prize of best bull at a Jalikatu festival. Kirtan says transgender people are no less than others and that is why she took this challenge. <laughs> Jallikattu festival attracts thousands of tourists every year to witness Tamil Nadu youths showcasing their heroic skills in the arena. The competition is scheduled to be held in January next year. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Six terrorists neutralized in two separate encounters in India's Jammu and Kashmir. U.S. appoints Rina Amiri as special envoy to defend Afghan women's rights. And Pakistan's cabinet approves mini-budget amid rising inflation. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.